From exchanging trash talks to intense brawls between fans, the NBA always has one rivalry or the other to offer fans. But I'll start the heated affair with two of the most successful franchises in the history of the NBA. It's none other than the Celtics versus the Lakers. These two are, without a doubt, the most famous in the league and their rivalry fuels their fans with passion. The hunger and desire to see your rival team lose is beautiful on its own. The Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers have faced each other 12 times in the NBA Finals. Many of these encounters were pure classics. No duo has ever fought more for a place at the top in any professional sport to decide their league championship than these two. But the Celtics Lakers rivalry was at its extreme from the 60s to the 80s, and it was the stuff to watch. The Larry Bird and Magic Johnson face off in some of the most nostalgic games in NBA history will forever be iconic. Speaking of standings, the Celtics do have the edge over the Lakers by bagging the victory the first eight times. I apologize to all the Laker fans, but don't fret guys, the Lakers are going strong by winning the last three out of four championship matches against their rival. The two teams have rekindled their rivalry in recent years, giving the fans a taste of what they've been missing. The Celtics won the championship in 2008, and the Lakers avenged themselves in 2010. Sadly, the NBA's two lethal teams are currently struggling, but the fans can look back at the good old days to relive the magic. For once, the epic Boston-Los Angeles championship match has been one of the NBA's vital moments. With the rivalry between the Celtics and the Lakers out of the way, let me now move on to the one between their best players. Yeah, I'm talking about Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. At the start of their rivalry, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird weren't exactly pals. Their first epic clash transpired in the 1979 NCAA championship game, and let's say the Johnson's Spartans humbled the tournament's leading scorer and rebounder Bird and his overmatched team, Sycamores. And their first encounter in the NBA championship was in 1984, when Bird and the Celtics flew high by winning seven games. But the Lakers didn't rest, and they didn't back down. The Showtime Lakers, due to its offense made easy by Johnson, won the championship the following year. As you might know, they defeated the Celtics in six games and won it on their own turf. Now that's how you clap back, people. But despite their long and bitter rivalry, the two greats became close friends in 1985 when they met while filming a sneaker commercial. But the fans know one thing. The two never gave up on the court, and each man's spectacular legacy is entangled with the other. But but more teams in the Western Conference need to be mentioned, so let's discuss the Spurs versus the Suns. It all started when the San Antonio Spurs faced the Phoenix Suns in the 90s. Do you know when the Spurs were led by the Admiral David Robinson against some star-studded Phoenix teams? By that, I mean the trash-talking bunch starring Charles Barkley, Dan Marley, and Kevin Johnson. And since then, the rivalry's been going strong, with the two battling it out in some heated matchups. In the span of 1992 and 1998, the teams met in the playoffs four times, with each team winning two of the four series. But I gotta admit, from Amare Stoudemire's high-flying dunks to Tim Duncan's clutch shots, the Spurs-Suns rivalry was always a sight to watch. Felton inside, won't go, dunk to the rebound, stolen by Stoudemire, Duncan's hurt. Stoudemire dunks over Duncan. Decent spacing on this break here, got Zach trailing. Nice finish there from Jeremy, just to get the two pull. Couldn't make a pay, coming underneath. Collins to Sohan! The Destroyer. But enough about the Western side. Let's talk about some of the juiciest rivalries in the Eastern Conference. How about we begin with the Bulls versus the Pistons? In the late 1980s and early 1990s, these teams would be at each other's throats for Eastern Conference supremacy. In the early years of the feud, Detroit baddies managed their way with the enforcement of one sacred mantra, Jordan rules. Those rules were designed by Detroit head coach Chuck Daly to let the other Bull players besides Michael Jordan take the game's important shots. I mean, Jordan was there to demolish his opposing team. He was that dangerous, and the only way to control the GOAT was to play dirty, and that meant making fouls with every chance they got. But their strategy did pay off. The Pistons defeated the Bulls in five games in 1988 and six games in 1989. The Bulls took the Pistons to seven games in 1990, but Detroit still won. But 1991 was the year for the Bulls. The Bulls not only defeated their archenemy Pistons, but also wiped them in four games. Thomas and his many teammates teammates walked off the court moments before the fourth game concluded. They even refused to shake hands or congratulate the Bulls. I mean, that was petty. But Chicago was soaring high and would go on to win their first title by beating the LA Lakers in the final. Even though the rivalry was infamously known for the physical plays and hard fouls, the heated and intense matches had everyone on their toes. And with the two greats in basketball, Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas leading their franchise to be victorious. The passion, the intensity, I got goosebumps. 
Speaking of the two leaders, let me discuss these two players next. The sworn enemy, Isaiah Thomas, the leader of the Detroit Pistons, and Chicago Bulls rookie Michael Jordan. Enemies had the most intense rivalry. MJ was at the start of a career that would see him become the greatest NBA player of all time. But mind you, the dominance of his airness was evident during his rookie season as well. His greatest enemy was Thomas, who crafted a plan to block Jordan out at the All-Star game, limiting MJ's chances in the game. But Isaiah's scheme was later in effective, though it did give birth to something else, the bitter rivalry between the two. Jordan had the sweet taste of revenge when Thomas was benched in the US Olympic Dream Team in 1992. I know Thomas was a fantastic guard and a Hall of Famer, but his career was never on par with Jordan's. The NBA fans do see personal enmities blossom into friendships, but that wasn't the case with these two. The Knicks' only win came in the 1994 playoffs, one of the two seasons that Jordan left the Bulls in his attempt to play baseball. The two still don't see eye to eye, but the Pistons weren't the only team that the Bulls had trouble with, because how can I forget the New York Knicks? During the MJ era, the Bulls faced many opponents, and New York Knicks were one of those teams as well. Between 1989 and 1995, the Bulls and Knicks met six times in the postseason, with the Bulls winning five of those series. Jordan was the moment, obviously. Jordan's skill and emotional drive were frequently the deciding factors in the matches. The GOAT always found an edge in the final moments to hold off the tough side of the Knicks. Despite frequently coming up short, the Knicks never gave up or admitted that their side was inferior. But the Knicks did secure one victory against the Bulls in the 1994 playoffs. Hallelujah! Their only win in the series was marked in one of the two seasons Jordan left to complete side quests, aka baseball. And finally, honorary mentions to none other than Bill Russell versus Wilt Chamberlain. Unlike MJ and Isaiah, Russell and Chamberlain were best friends off the court. Their mutual respect was as important to the two stars as their legendary on-court battles. I mean, we love to see that, don't we? Well, that's all on the NBA's most intense rivalries in the history of the NBA. Wanted to do attack against the pressure. Here's your big man finishing and getting the foul. He did not get the free throw, so it's still a three-point game. Kenbert, Tom Hammond here at the form in Los Angeles. The Lakers and Bulls, and Jordan regains the lead. Differential, so San Antonio must score, or they got to get a shot up. Chicago by Worthy, Jordan, Paxson. Yeah, it's not going to appear to get poked. And he was shaken up after he threw that pass out. Yeah, he blew right by Jane Worthy. Goes up. Well, pushed a little bit. Shot it with his right hand. Doesn't get it. The rebound. The follow by Pippen as he goes hard. Two out of three in Texas did Chicago. Seven, six on the shot clock. Jordan flying. Oh. 